Today, we profile a young man whose life was turned upside down in a tragic moment. We all seem to know someone affected by drink driving, yet thousands of people continue to think they're invincible. Later in the program, Tanya talks to New York policemen about the lingering impact of the collapse of the Twin Towers. These two men very rarely come to the site and find being here, many years on, extremely difficult. It's the country's deep, dark, dirty secret. But first, a tragic story of teenagers and alcohol. George Kenny went out for a few drinks one night and got into a car with a drunk. The crash that happened that night left George with a severe brain injury. He's now having to learn everything from walking to writing. I died for 30 whole minutes. I was in a coma for a month. They never thought I would ever survive. Profound words from 19-year-old George Kearney. Two years ago, he was in a drink driving accident that nearly cost him his life. When George first had his accident, none of us really knew what to expect. I mean, the first part of it was just the fact that George was alive was so amazing and we were so happy about it and had no idea at that time about what, what George was going to be. We kept being told that it was going to be a life-changing experience for all of us, but we had no real understanding of what that would mean. George was a high achiever on the brink of leaving school. Popular and good-looking, he excelled at everything. George played basketball, he rode, and was admired by his friends and siblings. Life was sweet, and he figured he was invincible. But every plan George had, and every dream, was wiped out on the night of that accident. It was a classic cocktail of excessive drinking and speed. Four teenagers in a car on the way to yet another party. A night that George's life changed forever. I was a bit of a, um, elky. I like showing up and getting drunk. I said this every weekend. Party! It was three weeks before his final exams. He'd been studying all day and wasn't planning on heading out that night. When a text came through late evening, he changed his mind. He headed to a party, dropped by a couple of bars and slugged on a bottle of vodka. Just hours later, George and his drunken teenage mates were in a car that was skidding towards a brick wall. The next thing, it was 1.30 in the morning and the doorbell rang and it was the police. And the police said to me, um, he's category one, you need to get there really quickly. He had an operation to have his spleen removed immediately and the next two days we were just told they needed to wait and see and would make an assessment as to whether they would let him live. Penny maintained an anxious bedside vigil that went on for a month. George's head injury was so severe, no one was sure if he'd live or die. And I went up to the hospital every day and just sat with him and read to him. Um, just tried to be there and hope that maybe he heard a little bit of the love that I was giving to him to help him through. When he finally came out of the coma, he awoke dazed, confused and a very different George. I said not a good word when I woke up. I said the F word and then who are you to my own mum who was hugging, kissing me, saying how much she loved me. And I really regret that. Substantial brain damage meant George was no longer the bright, capable, sporty George everyone knew before the accident. He couldn't walk, his speech was affected, and he had no concept of how the world worked. He's 19 now, but has a mental age of someone much younger. He behaves, talks and moves like a child, and has little concept of social niceties. So socialising for George is really hard work. It's going back to learning now, learning from scratches to a lot of the what's socially appropriate. And um, 
so he's very childlike in many ways for a lot of the things, his, his understanding of how people communicate. And I think um, he also finds it quite difficult to read people because he can't see very well. So the sight, his, his loss of sight was a, a result of that frontal lobe injury and um, damage to the optic chiasm. This left eye, you can, I can only see a tiny bit out of the right hand side of my eye. And my right hand eye is horrible too, but just a little bit better. So I can see the camera, I can see it. And my left ear is deaf, 100% deaf. My right ear is bad. My nose can't smell. Normally I say good round my brothers, but this isn't the point to say that. <laughs> and the left hand side of my mouth can't taste. I feel more than you do including temperature. If it's a little bit cold, I feel really cold. And if it's a little bit hot, I feel boiling. I have a lot of my, I had a lot of my head missing. And they took fat out of my stomach, mixed it with titanium, and they put it there. Plastic surgery, sure, but I'd rather look like that instead of you seeing my brain pulsing. But it does come with a lot of disadvantages, such as mental fatigue. I get very tired very easily. <laughs> I go for a five minute walk, I have to go to sleep pretty much. <laughs> George's mates are all now at university, out flatting and still partying on the weekends. Two years on and George's world revolves around rehabilitation and rest. I have a physiotherapist and she's helping me a lot to maintain energy during the day. And I take half an hour to an hour rest every time, day at around about midday. So I'm planning on just going out after midday and then staying out till midnight. <laughs> Brain injury often results in the change of personality. George has developed a childlike nature and a knack for telling jokes. Maybe. Only he can't quite figure out whether they're funny or not. I love the jokes. I tell jokes every single day. And um, I like having fun. It's the best joke in the world, in my view, but everyone else doesn't like it. Knock, knock. Who's there? Ipe. Ipe. Who? You poo. Don't tell me that. Ah, oh, no. <laughs> Since the accident, George has needed round-the-clock care. His mum, Penny, quit her job and was taking care of him pretty much full-time. But she realised she couldn't keep it up alone. The family